Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 8th, 2022, around 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the new seasonal predictions from Colorado State University and our own seasonal predictions that have come out today, and a look at what to expect over the next couple of weeks across the tropical Atlantic and when the next storm will form. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wild look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, while well, we noticed that all is certainly quiet across the basin, that is certainly some good news. We don't really have much going on. Most of the deep tropics are shut down. A couple of tropical waves embedded in the flow here down in the MDR, but not much going on. We do have some front action going on across parts of the North Atlantic right now. And a couple of storm complexes across the Ohio Valley, bringing some severe weather potential there. But otherwise, all else is quiet. In the Eastern Pacific Basin, we still have Hurricane Bonnie, still a Category 1, maintaining its intensity, but it is beginning to weaken and is likely to become a post-tropical cyclone by tomorrow. We have a new system with a high development chance as it moves generally towards the west and northwest over the next couple of days. We have a new system behind that as well with a low potential for development over the next five days as it generally heads towards the west or northwest over the next five to six days. No impacts expected to portions of coastal Mexico or Central America at this time. And in the Atlantic Basin, all is pretty quiet right now. The tropical weather outlook from this morning, no tropical cyclones expected over the next five days. That is certainly some good news. Now, moving forward to what we can expect for the remainder of the season. Well, the seasonal predictions for me today have been revised. This is the July 8th version of the revision. Of course, we had a June 1st revision, and the next revision will be on August 1st. So we, I'm still predicting really 20 name storms. That number has not changed from last time. We still predict 20 name storms, nine hurricanes, and five major hurricanes, so category three or higher of intensity. And there is a 34% chance that is of a hyperactive season. That is up from a 24% per, uh, back on June 1st. So this is a 10% increase in the hyperactivity category with, again, that 58% chance of an above average. So that is factoring in because this is 100% scale. Again, that is now factoring in the heavier weight of the hyperactive season starting to kind of come into play. And again, really no shot at seeing an above average or be below average season, rather 1% chance and only a 7% chance of a, uh, really, of a uh, normal season. So not really suggesting any significant uh, downward trends in this latest. And of course, again, likely to see above normal ACE index. Again, 70% chance that the accumulated cyclone energy will be about 70%. Uh, seeing that above average with, again, just uh, slightly lower than 50% odds of hyperactivity. Uh, in terms of the ACE category. So that certainly uh, has increased from last time. And again, the below average and near seasonal norms are under 10% and 2% respectively. Looking at the overall impact zones for this year, again, not much has really changed with this overall forecast. Really, uh, the big thing is that it is still predicted that the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico will experience higher than normal activity this year. And that is likely to be attributed to a big ridge of high pressure across the North Atlantic that will be generally steering storms westward with time, uh, especially in the peak of the hurricane season. So for that reason, really, the entire Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, including Florida, has a significantly higher chance of seeing a significant tropical cyclone, so being hurricane or major hurricane uh, coming within about 50 miles of a given location in the Caribbean or Gulf Coast. So that's pretty high odds, respectively, uh, compared to seasonal norms. And then, of course, across the North Atlantic, there is the potential, especially with any early season fronts that begin to decay out here in the Gulf or subtropics, and they develop a tropical system that heads off towards the north and east. We kind of already saw that with Tropical Storm Colin, and that was pretty much right within that forecast bullseye. Uh, so we're already see seeing activity out here, and that could persist, especially uh, through the remainder of July. And then any uh, recurve systems that we might see out here in the MDR come uh, by late August into September. 
So looking at the sea surface temperature realm here, we should kind of take a look at this because some interesting things are beginning to happen here. So this is the sea surface temperature anomaly. This was updated as of yesterday, July 7th. So yesterday was Thursday. We noticed that we have some pretty cool um, conditions over here, cooler than normal conditions out across the subtropical Atlantic. And then compare that, we also have a pretty warm main development region, though it has cooled off uh, quite a bit over the past couple of days. And that has been attributed to stronger trade winds really blowing across the waters here and causing some pretty substantial upwelling. So that has certainly cooled off the sea surface temperatures there. Um, but overall, we're still looking pretty warm for this time of year compared to average. And then, of course, the Gulf of Mexico and whatnot is all pretty warm. North Atlantic is warm, so that is definitely prominent for setting up a big uh, North Atlantic ridge of high pressure, allowing storms to be forced westward closer to land. Uh, but generally speaking, because that we have a cooler subtropics this year, we don't necessarily need as warm of a main development region to in to really increase the instability down here. Uh, given the instability that we will have, again, comparatively, we've got cooler subtropics, warmer deep tropics, that favors the unstable atmosphere down there and generally more thunderstorm activity down across the deep tropics. And that certainly uh, has already been favored this year, it does seem. If we look here at the European Ensemble, this is the mean 200 millibar velocity potential anomalies. So basically a big way of saying that up at about 39,000 feet, we are looking at whether we have sinking air or rising air. Of course, sinking air here is indicated by the orange and the reds, and the rising air is kind of these green and teal colors. And what this indicates is that the upward moving air, especially because we're going down here with time, so this is the 21st of August, this is July 11th. So really, we have a suppressed phase of the Kelvin wave moving through the Atlantic Basin right now. You can kind of see that this area roughly corresponds to the Atlantic Basin over here in Africa. Basically, a Kelvin wave is a short moving pulse of energy in the atmosphere. It can either bring sinking air, suppressed motions, or upward moving air and allowing for thunderstorms. Suppressed phase doesn't allow thunderstorms, not good for tropical development, upward moving air, and you know just basically convergence and divergence aloft certainly good for tropical cyclones. So basically what we're seeing right now, we've got this kind of Kelvin wave passing through, it's suppressed, not expecting development for the next couple of weeks. We can see out through July 21st, that development, especially in the deep tropics will kind of be shunted. And then after that point, we start to get to about July 26th and we notice what happens here. Notice that instead of having Kelvin waves that begin to pass through the East Pacific and West Pacific, we actually now completely shut down this area with dry suppressed air across the entire portions of the West Pacific and East Pacific. And what that's going to do is basically then create this upward moving air because air has to go up somewhere. And so we're gonna have this upward moving air basically centered over Africa and the Indian Ocean. And what that is going to do is that's going to allow for enhanced precipitation and stronger tropical waves to move off of Africa anywhere between really about July 21st and then into the uh, you know middle and late part of August, it seems we will see that. Now, at least for the next 45 days, this goes out to about the 21st of August. So for right now, this goes out to the end of the, the forecast realm. We don't really see much, though there is certainly some hints here of tropical activity in the MDR over the next 45 days. Of course, this is not necessarily a guarantee and obviously it's way too early to be determining, you know, land impacts, whatever. So you can kind of just forget about all of this over here. The large majority of members do not suggest tropical activity. However, of course, this is a 45 day time frame, And obviously it's going to be important to remember that, you know, in 45 days, models cannot predict tropical cyclone formation more than really 10 days out. So this is just kind of a very rough estimate. Bottom line, it seems like we will start to have activity start to peak up really after about the late part of July. It seems like from about July 25th onward, development chances will be on the increase across the tropical main development region. So looking at what to expect, well, 
uh, tomorrow, because there will be no video out tomorrow, uh, there will be, in lieu of that, there will be this video. This is the track forecast or the, the track in path and intensity of Tropical Storm Colin uh, that formed just a couple of days ago and made impact across portions of the Carolina coastline. So the full video will be out tomorrow in the afternoon, probably around about 2.30 Eastern time. All right. So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more on Sunday.